Johnny Stephen here for Irishboxing.com with Shane McGuigan. Shane, just firstly, did you find out if you were the youngest trainer of the world champion? That. It's all superficial stuff anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, I think, I think yeah, probably I would be, yeah. but uh, records are for DJ, so. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> they don't read into anything nah, about it? No, they enjoy doing my job. You know, so. And then just, obviously I've talked about Carl. Is there been a bit of a, a, a more air now that he's won the world title in training? Do you see a difference in him or is he still... Yeah, he's raised his game. Yeah, um, he's, yeah he's, he's, he's definitely upped it a little bit. Um, he's, he's always trained hard, so he's just giving him that little bit of extra edge. He's not here just to get to the top. He wants to stay there and unify the division. And yeah, he's, he's, he's bringing a new dimension to the training. And then, do you set him new goals? I know there was a big thing about putting his name on the world champion wall. The, yeah. that was the, 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 the unified wall. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unify the belts and you know, obviously move up. But it's, it's, it's every boxer's dream to, to do as much as they can in the sport, and that's goal. You know, once you reach a certain goal, you've got to set a new one, and, and his is now to unify the division, get some super fights. And you know, obviously, he wants to fight Scott Quigg, yeah. not for his belt, for his for the payday. Yeah. <laughs> and then he wants to fight uh, you know, either Santa Cruz or, or Rigondo. So there's some big fights out there, and then we've obviously got, we've got plans to move up, mm. all going well. But without, look, without looking past this fight, just on the Scott Quigg one, I sometimes get the feeling that he probably fights Scott Quigg just to, to prove that he isn't the, per the fighter that people make out and yeah. that friend. Just punch, look. Yeah. That's the thing, he can punch, but he can't. He's, he's had like 19 amateur fights, so like, no, no disrespect to, to guys without any amateur fights. That's where you learn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you learn your footwork, you learn how to go backwards, go forwards. And you just learn your fundamentals from a young age, and, and he was a kickboxer or something like that. So he's all he's all taught the wrong way, and you know he, his feet are far too close together. He scoots around the ring. Once he steps back, he's far too far back to throw his next punch. He plays tennis with boxers. He blocks, and then they let them have a shot, and then he has his shots. So he's, he's look, he's not very good. You know what I mean? All he's got is a bit of power, and he's and he's a bit vulnerable at that. So I think Chris Avalos is a much harder fight, and that's what we're focused on. Can you break down the Chris Avalos fight and how you see it going? They, they seem fairly calm. Or do you think that's bravado and he's, he's busting his balls to make the weight. Yeah. He's, yeah, you can see he's, he's used to the he's used to the heat out in California, so he's taking the edge off him over here, being in the cold. Um, but uh, he's a good fighter, he's he's a bet he's probably a better fighter than likes of Scott Quick. But you know, he's he was mandatory against Rigondo and he was mandatory in the, that was in the WBO, he's mandatory in the IBF. He's only had two losses and they were both on split decision. He's never been down, he can yeah. he's knocked out nineteen of his twenty five. He's he's a hard fight, you know what I mean? But um, ultimately we're a better fighter and he's he's lost to to worse fighters than Carl Frampton and that's gonna be the defining factor on on the night. And I think uh, but he's yeah, he's a tough fight, he, he works well, he throws a good uppercut, works his body quite well, he can punch a bit, but um, once again he's pretty one dimensional. A lot of people have been betting on your predictions over the last couple of fights. Can you give us a prediction so we can go to bookies? Why not? I'll, I'll say I'll say a late round start. Yeah, eight to ten. Eight to ten. Yeah, eight to ten. And then you you have a busy night, you've um, a lot of other fighters on the card. Can you just ask you about Conrad and yeah. Anto, just in terms of, I was just thinking to myself, it must be a, a sort of a different scenario for trying them. With Conrad, you try and hold him back because he, he yeah, was mad bit, to go, yeah. and then Anto was this sort of <laughs> super talent that he's was. A, he needs a rocket up his ass, Anto. Yeah. yeah he's, he's done well. He's Look, he's really up this game. Being around likes of Conrad is a hard hard trainer. Being yeah. around Carl, being around young Josh, who's also making his debut. They're all hard grafters, so uh, Anto's fit into that, and, and he's brought. It's brought the best out of him. Can, can you see, can you see, is it, like people would have said this is a super talent, yeah. if only, if only. Can you see, even now that it, with the. He's going to do something. Yeah. He's not going to be a nilly man, he's going to do it. Yeah. And, I, and I know he will. And it's because he just needs he needs a little bit of confidence in himself. You know, he's quite an underconfident kid. And all you got to do is just give him that little bit of confidence and, and tell him, you know, he, he can't get that as far as he's completely dominated all the rounds. And you think, oh, wasn't, wasn't that good there? Or did I lose a few rounds? It, that's. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just a different character like that. Whereas you know, Conrad may get his head punched off for four rounds, and then he wins the last two, and he'll come out thinking he's done great. Which yeah. is great. It's a that's a better mentality to be at. Yeah. You know I mean? So it's just good. It's different personalities that I've got to work with, and just trying to bring the most out of the, out of the lads. And just can you a quick word on the tests they have the weekend? Individually. Conrad's in a, he's going to be in a tough fight. Yeah. Uh, this guy's had about nine un unlicensed fights. I think he was un unbeaten as well, and then he had uh, he's four and zero as a. Four and zero in the in the pro ranks as well, so he's he's going to be he's going to be a good fight. He, he works sits on the ropes a little bit, but works off them, and that's over six rounds. It's going to be I couldn't steal the show because Conrad's like head first, and you know he, he, it's always an exciting fight. Yeah. So 
Uh, that could be a barnstormer to start the show off. And then we've obviously got Antti Kikachi in against um, Santiago Bustard, whatever his name is. He has a decent, coming in off a decent enough win, yeah. Off a, off a win against Ben Jones, who's ranked in the top 15 in yeah. the WBO. So this is a big step up for Anto, but I think uh, he's going to grab it with both hands. I think he's going to knock the guy out. Nice one. Appreciate that, Lucien. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.